Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Bruce Schwartz. I'm from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. This is a four inch telescope, 4.8, I think it's almost five inches, 127 SLT Celestron telescope. I'm getting a lot of questions in the comment section about how you all can start off the same way, but without investing as much as I had to, the community did. This is a telescope that I paid uh, about $1,100 for it and it's my backup telescope. I will never get rid of it. It's an amazing telescope, a lot of definition, and it's absolutely amazing. If you wanna start off and see the structures, you can see everything I'm seeing, everything. But here's the thing, you will see less detail a little bit as compared to what I'm finding. But there are ways of processing, zooming in uh, without manipulating the photo to be able to show exactly what's in your photo. You need clear nights. So like I said, $1,100 is what the, the telescope cost me. Uh, there's a wire at the back there, and I'll explain just quickly what that is. What you're gonna do is you're, you're gonna go get a solar imager. It connects to your telescope and to your computer. This is my next image five that I had bought, which I still use from time to time, but haven't posted anything I've got with it yet, but I will with the 14, because I can put this behind the 14 too. This goes and sits where your eyepiece usually sits when you um, are using a telescope without any camera. So it's very small, it fits in the palm of your hands. It's, you know, a good one can be three, four, five, six, seven hundred dollars, I guess. But say to yourself, if you want just strict minimum with a couple uh, pixels, megapixels of color, in color, of course, you could pay about a couple hundred dollars. Align where you always align the same time, each and every time you go on, I align with the M so that I know that I'm always aligned the same way and that it's not the moon that has flipped around many ways easy ways to stump people and to make people believe that there's a lot of crap happening out there when in reality sometimes nothing is going on this is a gps you don't actually need that to do what i'm doing with the moon and to follow things that are unknown but it's a must i do suggest you get one with a remote and why it's that if you want to follow one crater remain over a crater you will have to pan along using these arrows to follow it At 15 seconds, guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All engine running. We have a liftoff. Liftoff on Apollo 11. How hard can it be, since I have proof, to prove to the world that there is someone or some other species human or not, living on the surface of the moon. <laughs> Plato Crater, the transient lunar phenomenon behind it. What's this on the surface, all this color and the objects, the structures towering off the surface, only seen because the Terminator light is right on Plato Crater. We're in 2018. People can say we're in the future, but I see ourselves in the beginning of 2000, just like we were in 1918 all over again. Look in here in the center. These are structures. We're looking at the first pioneering ways of viewing the surface of the moon under this veil. Marconi, all the inventors, okay? Edison, okay, even who stole, you know, who Edison is, he stole Nikola Tesla's patents. So th these inventors invented all these uh, radios and televisions and, uh, you know, but the first attempts of doing so were so limited. They were so basic. You know, the, the light bulbs, all the rows of lights that they were trying to light up lights and all the process years and work that they went through to be able to do this. That's what I'm trying to do, show the surface. These are the first ways of being able to show that there is something up there 
with success, we've, we've succeeded. The fact that the structures on the surface have the same reflection as the surface, the same reflectivity. So the structuring is passing off for the surface. Either the telescope is ruling it out and or our eyes are also ruling it out. That's for sure. The surface structures are of the same reflectivity. So look at them. And the closer we get, so many high rising towering objects and bridge-like objects and long arms of some type. And look at all the objects side by side, some of them illuminated, some dark with uh, lit illuminations on them. So I took the Apollo 11 footage and put it in color and adjusted the exposure by descending it as it was too bright. And this would have been pretty cool to present to the world. And this is what it looks like. These are the colors that I show that they are showing too that they showed supposedly approaching the moon whether they did or not i remain neutral in that i'm showing what i see armstrong is on the moon neil armstrong 38 year old american standing on the surface of the moon on this july 20th 1969 that's one small step for man this is, like I said, in color. And I want you to see this part as they were leaving. I want you to take a look at one and the only crater, supposed crater that was close by when they took off. Look at the colors. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at it again and we're going to slow it down, zoom in to see if what I'm showing is similar to what we can see in the Apollo 11 footage.